Newly married couple Yuki and Jimmy are in their 20s. They hope to own a house one day, run a successful business, and live in an environment that enables them to speak freely without restraint and operate in a fully-fledged democratic system. But in March 2018, Yuki and Jimmy bought a one-way ticket out of Hong Kong. They no longer believe that the territory has a future. To them, Hong Kong is not only dying, it's already dead. You always feel like the government people they are working for themselves. Or working they for the rich people. Working for the rich people, yeah. working for the Communist Party, mm -hmm. uh, betraying the Hong Kong people. There are reports that a new wave of residents are beginning to leave, reminiscent of the mass exodus just before the historic 1997 handover of Hong Kong from British to Chinese rule. Is Hong Kong about to lose its best and brightest once more? Why is this happening again? I think it's very hard for the young generation to afford a house in Hong Kong, even like this tiny room. It's quite a burden for them. It's really expensive to buy an apartment in Hong Kong. We earn 10 to 20 thousand dollars a month, and an apartment is like 5 million. Upward. Yuki and Jimmy live together with his mother in this tiny two-bedroom flat. The couple can't afford to buy their own place. Prices have skyrocketed in the past few years, driven by low interest rates and mainland Chinese buyers. Hong Kong now is on the face of it, a very prosperous place in the region. But the average price of a flat is beyond the reach of a university graduate. They do not see a prospect of having middle-class living and the prospect of owning a flat without support from rich parents. So this combined, of course, make them a very unhappy generation. The loss of hope is driven by an increasing distrust of the central authority and a lack of faith in Hong Kong's leaders to protect the city's interests. I think, first of all, the uh, steady erosion of one country, two systems, the increasing restrictions on basic rights and freedoms, and the tightening grip of Beijing. Secondly is, of course, a whole host of uh, social and uh, economic issues. Keen competition, particularly from mainlanders, the unaffordability of housing, the growing income disparity. Overall, I think there's a growing concern that our government is not helping Hong Kong to defend one country, two systems, a high degree of autonomy, and ensuring that it is still Hong Kong people ruling Hong Kong. Yes, like every other day you turn on the TV, um, you read the news, and there would be something that really makes you angry, mm -hmm. like over budget infrastructure, mm -hmm. the third runway they are trying to build, and the uh, high speed rail. That is uh, over budget as well, and I don't really think there are many people who can benefit from the high-speed rail. The government's position is very simple. Nothing to do with us. It's a Chinese scheme. They control everything. Everything is fine as far as we're concerned. Now that is, of course, this really great disconnect between uh, the government's position and the views of the young people and the views of a lot of Hong Kong people are you really having the interests of Hong Kong people above all and not just following all this from the mainland that is really the crux of the matter and only if the government can do something about this can they restore confidence of uh, a lot of young people in Hong Kong For the young and the restless in Hong Kong who want to leave there are those who want to stay there are those who believe that all that Hong Kong is, all that it stands for, is worth the fight. I have never thought of leaving Hong Kong. The very first reason is that I treat Hong Kong as my home. I joined social movement, I joined political party also because I want Hong Kong to become a better society. But Yuki and Jimmy now have their minds set on leaving Hong Kong. They had spent one year in Australia on a working holiday and fell in love with the country. We did a lot of hiking, we liked nature, 
but in Hong Kong it's, it's all concrete, tall buildings. Sometimes I feel very bad that it looks like I'm betraying them, I'm fleeing. Yeah, I'm not doing what I should be doing as a citizen in Hong Kong. But life is like that. Yeah, I feel guilty. <laughs> I lost hope in Hong Kong. I think I will still care about the future of Hong Kong, but I feel hopeless. A lot of people might think that it is desperate and it is nearly impossible to change this current situation in Hong Kong. That's why they would like to leave. But hope can be created when people come together and when people want to fight for something they believe in. Also, 